Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. Today I thought we could do some minimalist abstracts that could be kind of flower-esque, and I'm going to show you how I did a short with one of with this kind of style I'm going to show you using my dagger brush. This is Princeton Neptune 3 8 inch dagger brush. We make a few marks and then we let that dry with a few watercolor marks and we let that dry and then we mark on top of that with whatever mark making tools that we're kind of interested in. And so because I'm doing not page to page or wall to wall or edge to edge, <laughs> because I'm not going edge to edge there, I'm kind of thinking that um, we don't need to tape it down. So I'm looking at the colors here in the Art Nouveau set. I'm going to work with these colors today because, and I pulled a palette card just to kind of keep me on track color-wise because you can, you can just pick whatever your favorite colors are and for years and years and years that's how I've created. But now I want to create a little differently and be more intentional with my color palettes. And for me, that has turned into working with the color palette cards that I like so much. Um, so I've pulled card 354 out of Color Cube 2 by Sarah Renee Clark. And I link these with all the supplies below the video for you. And I'm gonna pick these four colors out of this particular card um, because I like them. <laughs> and we're gonna watercolor first and then we will mark make on top of that. So I'm gonna take these four colors. So I pulled 402 Mars Yellow, 17 Coral Pink, 304 Alizarin Crimson, and 301 Old Mauve. Is that what that's it? Yep. And I'm just going to activate those with some water. And then I could have done these on my little sketchbook papers too because I love these little uh, tan cotton sketchbook pads that are watercolor pads that I got in one of my sketch boxes so then I ordered a couple more pads to do my little shorts and stuff with but I also like this kind of color so you know we might just experiment on one of those too because for some reason it's so interesting on a colored paper and I never really got into that before. Now I'm obsessed with it. So what I want to do first is just do some abstract kind of watercolor painting here and then when it dries we'll mark make on top of that. So I'm just getting my brush wet. I'm going to pick a color and I am going to create what probably is say the shape of a tulip and just kind of kind of go up and I can add some more water because I'm working with a cotton paper so it does take the water differently oh look at that one it does take the water differently and you know what we can do before we say okay to that is we can pull another color in here Ooh, and then watch how that kind of splays out and then we're going to move that one up and let it dry and work on a second one and you don't have to do these the same way you can do each one of these differently I just liked having that color palette be my suggestion of colors and what colors I might kind of bring in here in a moment um, to complement these and then you know the cotton paper takes the watercolor differently than the cellulose paper so you may have to come back with a little bit of water to get that to ooh, look at that orange <laughs> sometimes you just kind of gotta blindly stick your paintbrush in while you're talking say to the camera and just let it do its thing and see what fun you can get but i already like pink and orange so it wasn't too far out there but oh love that one and you just gotta practice just kind of pulling that up in a in a little yum shape like a flower or a tulip just kind of that one's real pretty look at that and then we could come back in 
maybe with this color. So we're just kind of letting that do its thing. Let's do an orange one. <laughs> yeah, let's do an orange. <laughs> and I'm getting some splatter here. So if you're, oh, and dripping. So if your brush is too close, be aware that you'll splatter paint all over it. Ooh, that one really looks like a tulip. Look at that. Oh yeah, we like that. Let's put some of this color kind of, look what I just did. <laughs> Dang it. All right, so if you do that and you're like me and you're like, what the heck? Take your brush and turn it into something you did on purpose instead of something you're like, why did I just do that? And splatter some more splatters in there. And just see what you get. That splattered over there. All right, so that, I don't know, I didn't like the way that one did. Let's try this with a fan brush that's not wet. Let's wet it and see, like maybe with a palette knife. Let's see, let's just test out some. Yeah, that didn't work. That was too wet. I've seen, let me get that off of there. Big blob. Take forever to dry. I don't mind the blob being there, but I don't want it to be a gigantic blob that's going to take forever to dry. I've seen like maybe a toothbrush or like maybe a little, I don't know, maybe something like this kind of brush. Let's just play on this one now and see which one of these. Yeah, that ain't working. <laughs> Usually I've just kind of done this number, but that was not working. Yeah, that looks a little better. Hmm. All right. I've seen another splatter technique that I want to try, but I don't remember where I saw it or what it was. All right, so now we're going to let these dry. Oh, let's do this one real quick. Let's do this one with the orange. <laughs> now that I jacked up my orange one. <laughs> All right, do many at a time. So when you do something weird, <gasps> oh, see now, okay. Now another thing about this cotton paper that I noticed, it's hot press, I think. Yes, hot press. Whereas these are cold press. So it's going to look completely different on this paper than it's gonna look on these papers. So kind of interesting contrast to see how is this gonna be different because of the different paper. Look at that, that's really pretty actually. All right, so let's let these dry and then we'll mark make on top of them. And I wanna encourage you, actually let's just move this up. I wanna encourage you to try to let these dry naturally. Don't hit them with the, with the, with the uh, heat gun until like the very end if you can resist. So I'm kind of thinking that we could do graphite on top of these for mark making. I like my pit matte 14B pencil, but we could come back now and mark make on top of this with whatever your favorite mark making tool is. You could do some acrylic marks. You could do oil pastels. You could do soft pastels. You could do graphite. And now the goal is just in my mind to add some interesting marks to our piece. So I like that. I'm also looking at my color palette card over here and thinking, all right, which of these colors do I want to incorporate in our piece? And do I have any of these colors in these kind of oil pastel pieces? Like I've got these Mungyo um, oil pastels. So I do have like this orange, I really want like a yummy pink. Do we have, see now this light pink is kind of up here. See right there, it's almost right on. I kind of want like maybe a burgundy. Uh, so the burgundies in this one are a little brighter than that. Let me check my other pastel ones. They're a little bit brighter, so in this case, I'm only using this as a suggestion and I could veer off of that suggestion and say like, well, I really, so I could pull this dark one, which 
it's kind of like an aubergine. Really, oh yeah, that one right there. Okay, so these three colors, look at these. Let me just scoot this out of the way for a moment. Look at these. Yummy, yummy. So I'm kind of feeling like this one. And we could just kind of add to the marks of our piece. And you don't have to do too many. A couple is fine. Oh, see, pretty, pretty. Okay, I like that one. All right, and this one, it's close to being dry. So while I don't normally like using the heat gun with the watercolors, you'll notice that because we let that one sit there for a while and then we hit it with a heat gun, look how cool those mark makings and things is. So we could come back on this one with Posca pen if you want to add some dots in there. I want to do more lines. I like this kind of this flower feel that we've created. Um, so I'm going to continue with that feeling. These are all up to like what it is that grabs you as you're creating. Um, so I really like that. And you can see how fast these go once everything is kind of dry and you add in a few marks. You could punch out some of these in like a minute, a minute or two, just no time at all. And you know, you could come back and add some other marks on here. It doesn't have to go directly with the shape that you already had started. You could get creative and kind of get outside that color too. So I want you to play, just experiment and see like what could you create with some fun abstract colors like this. This one, I'm loving this one. Wow, let's go ahead and get some color and marks going there. I don't know. Do I want the purple? The purple. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Oh, see, it's so smooth on this paper. I need to get my hot press pad out and use that more. Look at that. That one on the hot press. So lovely. Okay, loving that one. All right, back to the one that we just really did some crazy stuff to. And then on the crazy one, if you tried something and you're like, oh, I don't know about that one, then just use that as your mark making experiment project to begin with. You don't have to worry about it because in your mind it's already messed up. And sometimes those are the best. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so this one, I feel like we could cut that one into little hearts. <laughs> and those three are pretty. Let's see. Let's just see what this would look like. <laughs> we always have, look at that. Let's just do it. <laughs> we always have the heart punch handy. Okay, let me get my scissors. Because I'm liking some of this right over here. And I need to get it tighter for the hearts. <laughs> it's still wet too, but it's okay. <gasps> look at that one. Oh my gosh, look at that one. Wow. Okay. Okay, see, even coming in from the side. See, things like this totally turned a blah piece into a wow pieces. Okay, love that. So no piece of art is ruined. In the making of art, we can always cut it into something that brings us a little bit of joy and little hearts bring me joy. <laughs> okay, so these are super fun. I want you to give out these little abstract, yummy little flowers a try. Um, this one might be my favorite and you can add a little mark making. I could come back on top of this with some Posca dots. That might be fun because um, then we could just add a little bit of more in there. I think this pen is about had it, but that's okay. It's very light and subtle, which I'm kind of loving. Those just kind of sunk right in this pen. That pen has had its better days. This one too. I have just wore these out. 
I still like it though. Look how pretty that is. Just a tiny suggestion in there. Look how pretty that comes out. Okay, so these are super fun. They're very easy. We could mark make on this one. Actually, I feel like, let's just, I'm feeling it. <laughs> kind of like this color right here. Look at this one. Okay, I'm feeling it on this. We're just gonna, we're gonna dot these up. I thought I was done, but I lied. <laughs> oh my gosh. <gasps> Look what the color dots do to this. Whoa, whoa. Oh, look how delightful. Just that little extra detail. Look what that does. Okay, so don't give up too soon. I kind of like this peachy one. What color is this? This is apricot. Apricot is a good one. <laughs> oh, right on that purple. Oh, yes. Look at that. That one's yummy. All right, let's kind of, let's do that over here. apricot for the win today <laughs> and you know what on these little heart ones that we did you could always go back and mark make on top of those too you don't have to stop where those are oh look at that it's like a little magical whimsical dots there super pretty okay I'm love loving these with the dots on them all right so this one let's see what can we do on top of this one what colors do we have over here that would contrast pretty. I do have several colors. Maybe we'll just go with this uh, pretty burgundy one. What color is this? This is red wine. Oh yeah, I'm feeling red wine today. Sometimes it's just a little extra bit of whimsy that we add that completes a piece and gives it the extra little movement and excitement that maybe we're like, oh, it's kind of missing something. What's it missing? And if you don't know what it's missing right up front, don't force it. Put that piece away and look at it for a while until you're like, wait, I know what it needs now. And then you can do it. Ah, oh, and see these get funner and funner the more you do, like for reals. <laughs> <laughs> this one's still kind of my favorite. I feel like this one needs some of those apricot dots because the white sank in and it's real pretty. But it's, I think it's because I still got paint. The paint is still not completely dry. I just felt that it. it was a little tiny bit wet. But look at that. We can kind of just right on top even of the dot that we already did just as another little layer. I love it. Wow. Wow. Okay, so this is my favorite still. This one's got a dot out here. I could come back with some strategic dots. You know, you could, you could, I'm thinking out loud here, we could just take a little bit of the pink and then we could very strategically put a spot or two out here with our paintbrush. We can dot those. We don't have to let them be random. That was a lot of water. Not what I wanted. Let's do this with the mop brush. I think my mop brush is my favorite way to do that. Let me get that little, here it is. All right, water on the mop. Let's just pray I don't totally jack this up here. <laughs> Let's practice on this other one first. See there, I want that. I want just a couple. <gasps> That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, let's stop there before I actually ruin it okay we're gonna let that dry this one is so delightful love that on that hot press paper this is my very favorite for today i definitely want to see what you're creating with something like this pick a color palette stay within those colors and just see like what you can come up with and then if you get a dud chop it into some pretty little hearts or squares or shapes and you can use these for lots of fun things can't wait to see your abstract tulipy kind of flowers that's what we'll call these and i'll see you next time <laughs>